Hi there, and welcome to Gypsy Studios. I'm Christy Bell, and I will be your instructor today. But before we jump right in, I wanted to offer a little bit of advice and also then go over some of the supplies that you're gonna to need to have ready before we get started. So, advice. Remember that you are learning. This is something new. This is something you're doing for the first time. So give yourself some grace and understand that it takes a lot of practice and patience to learn something new. You don't really just start out being amazing at something. You might start out with an eye, you might start out with some talent, but to really learn how to do something well, you have to hone that skill. So you have to really work at it, you have to really practice, and you have to take those gifts that you have and, and, and put it into practice and learn new ways to use things. So for example, say that I'm like a really great um, pianist. So I play the piano like no other. Like I have such a great, um, I have such great piano playing skills, right? But then if you give me say a violin, I'm probably not gonna know how to do that. So if I try to pick up a violin after having played the piano, I'm gonna play the violin and hear all the sounds that are sounding so wrong and know that all the notes are wrong because I know how the note should sound because I play the piano. But the thing is, I don't know how to use this new instrument yet. So just try to remember those things that when you're learning something new, even if you've drawn before, even if you've painted with oils before, even if you've painted with watercolors, whatever experience of art you have, know that this is something new if you're learning acrylic painting for the first time or if you're even taking a class for the first time. So remember to give yourself some grace and, and be patient with yourself and know that um, nobody starts out a professional artist. Everybody starts out as an amateur and, and works toward that goal. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is acrylic paint is super forgiving. It's an awesome medium. It's why it's my favorite, honestly, because it is, it is a medium that dries so fast that you can easily paint over things. So say you get something in the wrong spot. So we almost always start with yellow paint and we start with yellow paint because it's the lightest color, it's really easy to cover over. So if you get something in the wrong spot, you don't have to stress about it. You can just draw the right line. So, you know, we drew the drawing with the yellow paint and then when you go in to make a correction, you just make the right one and you don't have to worry about getting those lines off or anything because we're gonna paint over all of it. So um, that's my biggest advice to you is don't stress. Also, when I tell you don't worry about certain layers, really don't worry about it because a lot of times we're painting over some of those things. And acrylic painting is a lot about building layers. So the more layers you have, um, the richer the painting is going to look. So remember those things. And um, also, <laughs> while I'm at it, Acrylic paint dries really fast, which is good for painting and and um, and being able to paint on top of and recovering things like that, but it's not so good for your clothes. So if you're wearing clothes that you don't wanna get paint on uh, and have it stay on there forever, you might wanna wear an apron to cover your clothing or, uh, or just make sure you're wearing clothes that it's okay if paint gets on there because Acrylic paint dries hard and it dries on the fabric and it won't come out. So, um, but occasionally you can, if you go really quick, like if you notice that you got the paint on you right away, if you take that piece of clothing off and go straight to the sink really fast and rinse it out, oftentimes you can save it and you can get the um, paint out. But I just wanna let you know, you have to do it right away. Don't let it sit till the end of your painting and then go try and get it out because you won't be successful. Um, so let's talk about other things you're gonna need for this. For painting with me, you're going to need um, usually three brushes, sometimes less, but um, a big paintbrush, a medium-sized paintbrush, and a small detail paintbrush with a point. Um, you can really get almost every painting done with, with these three paintbrushes if you can make that happen. Um, some are just these two, Etc. Of course, if you have more paintbrushes, great. Use as many as you want. Um, but I just want to show you that's that's the bare minimum that you need. Another thing is I, I use a palette knife for mixing paint, uh, but you don't need to. I'm going to do most of my videos without it, just because I'm assuming that a lot of people don't have all the supplies 
uh, that they might need. So, but you do need something like a butter knife or a paint knife or something if you have uh, paint pots like this to get the paint out of because you can't put your paintbrush in there because you'll start mixing colors and you don't want to do that and contaminate your new paint. So uh, I use a palette knife, butter knife, cheese knife, all sorts of things can work for this. Uh, you also need a water jar with water for rinsing your brushes. And I use a paint rag like this. Uh, this is just an old rag that uh, has now become a paint rag. So if you have like an old cleaning rag or even old shirts that um, you're done with or that have holes in them or something, now you can rip them up and you can use it for this. It's really just to, uh, once, once you're done rinsing a paintbrush, it's just to wipe the paintbrush on here and get the excess paint or water off your brush or to clean your palette knife in between using that. You'll need palette, a palette of some kind. You can use a plate, you can use paper plate, you can use wax paper. I use this palette paper, I love it. It's just basically wax paper on a little, I don't know, cardboard thing. And then you can just tear it off and throw it away, which is nice. I also really like stay wet palettes. That keeps your paint wet. So if you're working on a project uh, and then you want to put it away and come back to it later, your paint will all still be workable. Otherwise the acrylic paint dries hard. Uh, lastly, you're gonna need a canvas or a painting surface of some kind. Uh, there's these kinds of canvases that have a profile. This is a thin profile. There's thicker profiles. There's also flat um, palette, or, or sorry, not palette. Um, this is canvas board. Um, so there's those kind. There's, there's all kinds of, there's also uh, canvas paper. You can also get away with just any thick paper. If you have thick paper, you can usually use this. I would just say less water uh, when you're rinsing things and make sure you really dry it off on a rag um, or a paper towel, but it's a lot more environmentally friendly to use a rag. I'm gonna tell you in the next slide what paint colors you're going to need and also what uh, paint brushes you'll need to use. So for those, uh, just hold on tight and we'll get you that information in just a second. Okay, thanks. I hope you enjoy and have fun. Right, let's get started. So first off, we're gonna need to make just a few marks on the canvas, just to make sure we know where the paint colors are gonna go once we mix them up. So let's start with our smallest brush, the smallest pointed one you have, and let's get it wet, but then just wipe it on your um, towel here. Set the over here. And I'm gonna leave it there while I get myself a little bit of paint on my palette. So grab yourself whatever palette knife or thing you're using. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of yellow paint here. This can be any color yellow. It just needs to be light enough that you can paint over it. Okay, now I'm gonna get a little bit of that color. You don't need very much. So don't get huge blobs on your brush. And we're gonna create the horizon line first. So this is where the sky meets the water or the land or a little bit of we're gonna have a little tiny island out there. So um, this is a little bit more of like a bay type thing. So you'll see where the sky meets the water and land. It's gonna be um, below the halfway point. So I'm gonna make it about a third of the way up, maybe like, well, maybe a little higher than third. Right about here. You're just gonna draw a line as straight as you can get it, but it doesn't really matter too much. This is just for you to see. You'll be painting over it. Okay, so about like that. And really, that's, well, no, let's do one more thing. We're gonna do one more little mark over here, and it's gonna be about like this. Okay, so it's going off the edge, and this is not exact, it doesn't matter too much how this goes, but you want it just up on this edge a little bit and then coming off the canvas here before the edge of the canvas. So that's it, just goes off here. Okay, now that can go in the water and we're gonna switch to our bigger brush. Um, but first we need to get some paint. 
paint on our palette. So we're gonna start off with a sky blue color. So for the sky, I always like to add a little bit of this phthalo green in it. Um, it's like a midnight green color and it really helps make turquoisey colors. So I'm not gonna use too much of it for the sky, but I will use a touch. And then I'm gonna add even more of it to get like the ocean tropical color. If you add too much green right away, it's gonna get tropical really fast. So to keep the sky more turquoise, you'll just add a little bit of phthalo first. So let's start out with getting some blue onto our palette. You don't need too much, that's actually probably more than you need to be honest. About like that, and then wipe it off. And then I'm gonna get myself a little bit of this phthalo green as well. Okay. Like that. And now our most important color is the white. So I'm gonna get a decent amount of white. I'm gonna use that kind of a lot. Wait, this guy. Okay, so I'm gonna start by using about half of this pile right here. Maybe a little more than half. And I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to it. Maybe more than that and then just a little bit of green. So see the comparison there? Now I'm gonna mix this up. I wanna get a pretty blue color, so I think I'm gonna need to add more of both the blue and the turquoise, or the phthalo green, rather. That's pretty, but I'm still gonna add more blue. I'm gonna get all of it. And a little more green. Okay, let's go with that. Now I'm just gonna get the excess off here, because I can. Put that in the water. I'm gonna dip my biggest brush into the water, wipe it along the rim here so it gets most of the excess water off, and then a little bit more on my rag, because you don't need a lot of extra water with this paint. So here we go, let's spread this in. And then the only thing I'm not gonna cover is right around here, about this portion down, I'm gonna add more white to the sky because the sky always gets a lot lighter at the horizon. So there's a couple ways you can do that, but I'll show you how I'm gonna do it. So as soon as you're happy with your sky color, go ahead and put it on. And honestly, your sky color can look different than mine. There's so many different colors uh, of the sky that any you know blue shade is pretty believable for this guy. Okay, so right around in here is where I'm gonna start getting more white. So I'm gonna get some white over here. And then I'm gonna add my blue to it. So it's a lot lighter. And some of that mixing and blending can happen on the canvas too. You can go right in into slash on top of this yellow line. You don't need to save that. You just need to make sure you can sort of see where it ends, that's all. Okay, see how it looks like a stripe right now? I don't really want it to look like a stripe. I want it to look like it's slowly fading into that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up like this all the way along the bottom. Okay, 
okay? Then I'm gonna go this way, back and forth, and back up into the sky. And then that kind of helps me have a little transition there, like fades a little more gradually. That's more what I'm looking for. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna start putting in some clouds. And these clouds, there's so many ways to paint clouds. Um, you can wait till it dries a little bit more and then add clouds in. You know what, I see a little bit more up here. That needs a little bit more of that paint. Okay. Once again, sorry. So again, I'm gonna wipe off my brush. And now I'm gonna start with just pure white and I'm probably gonna need more than this. I'll probably have to dip back into it. And you can use this big brush. You could also use a medium sized brush. So we're gonna layer in some clouds. The biggest thing I wanna um, remind you about with clouds is that this is a scene that we're like taking a snapshot of. So it's like as if you're holding up a camera, taking a picture of this scene. And therefore you're gonna be cropping clouds. So there's a lot of clouds that are coming in the sides. And, and they might be in the center, but usually clouds are not super well framed. So that's the biggest mistake that I see beginner painters doing is making sure all of your clouds are exactly in the frame and none of them go, going off the edge. So it's really important to make sure some of your clouds are going off the edge. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start going in like this, round, and kind of fading in. A lot of clouds have you know, flat bottoms like this. That's sort of important. Sometimes. <laughs> you don't wanna have too much um, similarity. So you wanna make sure that your clouds are looking like different shapes and stuff. This is like the first layer. So I'm gonna have some thin, now I'm gonna get some more, I'm um, sorry, thin clouds and stuff in here. And it's really just kind of more of like a light blue and then we'll get some more um, white on top of that. And that's what's gonna really make it look a little more like clouds getting hit by the sun. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is get more white in a couple areas. Uh, the sun, I'm having it come from kind of pretty much right on top. So I'm gonna try and get some areas hit in here, the tops of them especially. And I might need to go in with this brush and more white. So let me get some more white here. Use my middle size brush. So I'm trying to get some highlights on here, thinking where the sun would hit. And the sun's gonna hit the tops of the clouds for sure.
All right, that's good enough for me. Now what I'm gonna do is use more of this blue to get in some, um, some more blue in this area. So this is gonna be the water now. So for the water, I want it to be a little bit more on the green side. So, and I might actually put just a tiny bit of um, something else to kind of neutralize the color a bit, but I'm gonna get need some more blue for sure. So I'm gonna get some more blue in this color and then a little bit more green as well. Maybe even a little bit of yellow. Let's mix that up and see what we got. That's definitely more green. It might be too green for me to get more blue in it. want a little more blue. And mm, a little more white too. Don't want it quite that dark. See, notice how I'm adding colors in slowly. You don't want to get too much um, change too quickly where I have to keep going back and forth and back and forth and then you end up with a huge pile of paint. That's always a bummer. So, trying to avoid that. So there we go. I like that color. I'm gonna go with this one. Rinse my biggest brush. And get all the excess water off of that. Okay, now I'm gonna use this to fill in this area. Water is kind of important that your strokes are horizontal for the water. It helps it look like it's, um, like even in this area when you go in, I'm gonna go through this line right here, which is just this little sand area, but I'm gonna go in it like this, still horizontal back and forth on the canvas. Uh, it helps it make it look flat, like the water surface. And I'm just gonna do a couple little marks like this too. Through it. And then I'm gonna pull the sand into it later. this point this you want this line to be covered you don't want to see your yellow line too much if at all and I don't worry too much about um, these edges at least this one for sure but Making sure that it's like fairly evenly applied. Okay. That looks good-ish. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'm gonna go in there and there's gonna be little islands back here anyway, and then some extra sand back here to make it look a little more bay-like. And then we'll do our trees and the hammock. So I think we're good for now. At this point, you're gonna need to let it dry, which is never a fun part, so. Pause the video, let it dry, and we'll pick back up in a minute. All right, now we're ready to do the sand. So for the sand, we're gonna need another color here on our palette. We're gonna need a little bit of this brown color. This is burnt sienna. Um, that should be good for now. We will need it again later, but we'll use that for now. Um, and then we'll need more white, but I think our white, meh. Nah, it's got too much blue in it. So you can get burnt sienna by mixing red and a little bit of green, tiny bit of green. And to get green, it's blue and yellow. So I'm going to add, we don't need too much of this color, honestly. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of yellow over here and, or a little bit of white and a little yellow and then a little bit of brown, so less brown. More yellow. I'm gonna see, we're trying to get a nice sandy color. I think more yellow. How's that looking? Maybe, I think still more yellow. Oops, I got some green. I still want more yellow. And I put a tiny bit more brown too. There, I like that more. Okay, there's a nice little sandy color. I'm gonna use my medium brush. Rinse it, wipe it on the rag, get the excess off. And I'm gonna put this in here, in this area. And I'm gonna go further in than I did here. So I'm gonna go like this. Horizontally still. See, I'm kind of doing this. this is sort of like a dry brush technique. Where I just get a little bit of paint on the edge of my brush. And then I put that in there. And then I kind of smooth it out. And then it looks like the water sort of coming into the sand and meeting just really gently there. But 
like that. I don't like this too much. It looks too parallel there. So I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of my watercolor. Go over that. There you go. All right, so there's that. Now I'm gonna add just a tiny, tiny bit of black to this color, but tiny, like so minuscule. So I'm gonna take, just dip my the tip of that little guy in there and then I'm gonna wipe this off because that's already way more than I need. Okay, so I'm just gonna get a tiny bit of black to add to this color and that's because I want the color to now look like it's going into the background. So it's a little further away. Not much, just a little bit. So she's dulled down a tiny bit. See how it looks a little bit more dulled down? So I'm gonna use my middle brush again, wipe it off on the towel. I'm gonna use this color. I'm gonna go in here along the bottom part of the horizon line here, so into the water. And I'm just gonna help kind of redefine this area in here. So I'm gonna get a little thicker, go all the way across in here. a little bit, give the idea that it's sort of like a bay here. I'll go all the way across, but just faintly. That's almost too much to me. spots in here that are kind of bothering me. Oh, I don't want the yellow, I just want the blue water there. This is just the same color, I'm just noticing some areas where I see through it and I'm not loving that so I'm just gonna add A little bit more paint. Right now I'm gonna take a little bit of this brown and a little bit of this black and add it to just a portion right here of my sandy color there. And I got a nice, it looks kind of like a shadow color. I think I'm gonna add a tiny bit more black to it. funny at this point because we don't have our palm trees actually in yet but we're gonna do the shadows for the palm trees preemptively <laughs> so I'm gonna have this color in here and we're just gonna do a little bit like this and I'm actually gonna just give a marking for where the palm tree is gonna be 
So I'm gonna have this one coming out right here to right here. So it'll be like right there. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Get some little shadows. And these again are sort of horizontal because they're on the sand, which is flat. And I'm going to have one more palm tree right about here. This is the base. Going like this. It's going to go up from there. So here we go. More little shadows. Okay, so right now it'll just look sort of funny, and that's totally fine. do this little back island guy. So we're gonna need some yellow and blue or get some green. I'm gonna use my chromium green here, just easier. And then I'm gonna need black as well. So I probably need a little more black than I have there. So I'm gonna give myself a little more. together. Get my dark green color. A little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to need this color for the palm trees, but I'm going to leave it because I don't need, I just need a little tiny bit of this color for the back um, islands there, but the islands are going to have a little bit of white in them. So, it's this color, but I'm just gonna take a little bit of it off to the side, because this is probably about all I need, maybe a little more. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. Not too much, but me adding white to it basically turns it a little bit more gray, and that makes it look like it's further away. So with this, we're gonna go and actually do the little islands in here. So I like to start right around here, and I'm gonna go down, and kind of fade in that and blend. This is where you try and get it as straight as you can. Okay, so and make some little bumps. It's mostly just like greenery and things like that out there. with just pure water. Fade that out because I don't like how that's going into the sky. But I do want it to fade in here. Okay, so there's that guy. I don't think maybe it's a little more even there. And then I'm going to do just a little bit over here too. use your smaller brush for this, that's fine. Go ahead. All right, and now we're ready to do the actual trees. So um, for that color, we're gonna need brown and black equal parts. 
And every time I say brown, I mean burnt sienna here. And you can probably use any brownish color. And uh, brown you make with the three primaries, yellow, blue, and red. So you can mix just any brown color. Maybe a little bit more of it. Actually, probably don't need that much. <laughs> now that I got it, oh well. So now I'm gonna get equal parts black. So I want a dark palm tree because this part is the shade part. Shadow side of the palm tree. It's really dark. Okay, and I'm gonna use my smallest brush for this part. Gives me the most room for error. And uh, I already showed you the base of my palm tree, so I'm gonna show you that again. So here's one. And I'm actually just gonna do this across the bottom so you see the full extent. Okay, that's the base of it. And I'm gonna have it go up, curve over here, and be right about there coming off the canvas. So that's where my line's going, all right? So I like to give myself a dot so I know where I'm headed. And then I can kind of just go up like this and curve like that. Okay, so that's the first one. And this part's stressful, so take your time, but don't worry too much. Now this other one I have starting right here. kind of angling like this and it's gonna go up and out probably right about there and so same idea from the center like that okay now it's about filling it in so they get thicker I'm gonna switch my middle brush now they're thicker at the bottom just like any tree and thinner at the top so bottom part it's fairly easy you just got to be careful as you go up slowly thicken them happens and you catch it quick you can always take a clean paper towel and fresh water like this and you kind of get it off usually All right. Get a little bit more here. Okay, now this guy over here is meant to be a little more like this. Sure, I'm getting some lumps here. There we 
go. This only works, FYI, if you're um, if you're painting on an already previously dried area. Just so you know. Dang it! I'm getting sloppy. Actually, you know what, that's exactly where I'm gonna have the, um, what's it called, hammock be, so I'm not gonna worry about that little bump there, I'm just gonna leave it. Um, and the next thing I'm gonna do is, I think I need this dark green color for the leaves of the palm trees to be darker. So I'm gonna add in more black. Yeah, it's gotta be pretty dark. You want it to just look like black tinted green. Okay, so while this dries, I am going to use my small brush to get in some of the palm fronds. So with this dark color, I'm gonna have you start here and just pull out, pull out, kind of doing like a star. So from these guys, then you're gonna pull other little fronds down. The center should be pretty filled with fronds. Like this area, you're not gonna see that area, you can just fill it in, honestly. Notice the way I'm doing it is I'm pulling just away. I like push in at the center of the line and then pull away from the canvas to get the points. Okay, there's one. Now I'm gonna do the other guy. Here, maybe further. This one I'm gonna have coming down a little bit more just because it seems to be curved a little bit more than the other.
maybe I'll go in a little bit further here. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. Yeah, I see a few little spots in here. Need more paint, okay. All right, so now what we need to do is lighten up the base of the palm tree. So lightening it up, I'm just gonna add yellow and white into a portion of this color of the palm tree base. And I don't want it to be crazy bright, but lighter, so sort of like this. All right, and we're gonna do it sort of coming from above again, but since they're tilted this way, I think I'm gonna have this one getting a little bit more sun on this side. And that just basically means that you're gonna come in along this edge. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be the whole way down either. You're gonna go down that side and then pull over in a couple areas. From that center spot. Can't really see. Just make sure not to make it super even. All right, now let's get our hammock in there. I'm gonna do the hammock with the same dark color that the um, trees are. And I have this right here, that spot, and then I'm also gonna do it right about here. This is like right where the um, little island meets the tree. So I'm gonna do it there to here. So this first one, going from here, Doing it really lightly so I can try and connect. Okay, there we go. Got it. I get a little more black into this. Then at about this point, 
well actually let me do the center things first so we have these angles we're gonna do an angle about like this here and then the other side it's more like this that's gonna be right here okay so it's just going over just a tiny bit here And then these need to start going here. So I'm gonna disconnect from the main line here. Go about there, go to there. And that is way thicker than I wanted it to be. That's all right, I can fix it later. Same thing on the other side. here you're actually gonna do it's not a straight line but it's close to straight connecting from here to here it's like tiny bit rounded but mostly straight there and then we're gonna do a rounded underneath that Okay, so that's going to give us our hammock. I'm going to do just a few other little lines here. Now I think I'm gonna add in maybe this color, but more white and yellow into it. So it's like the light color on the palm tree, but I'm gonna add more yellow and white. Yeah, that's a pretty color. Okay, so that's gonna go in here. And then a, a little tiny bit of the dark goes back into this color for the underside. Because this part doesn't get the sun. Also use this lighter color in here, just in here. Kind of. Wash that up a little bit, or blur it out, I guess. Is more what I'm doing. Make it look more ropey in that area. All right, and now the last thing we're gonna do 
I'm actually going to add in a tiny bit more of my highlights right there. Okay, last thing we're going to do is our greenery in the trees. So for that, I'm going to need some green. And yellow. I'm going to take this yellow. And I'm actually going to get more yellow. Blend that together. There, it's a nice color. And I'm going to use my baby brush. And most of the top sides, like most of the tops of these branches of um, palm trees are going to be covered, but the underside needs to stay dark still. So you can kind of go out the spine like that and do things like this. Do you see how I'm leaving some of that dark underneath? Okay, and I'm gonna go put in just some yellow. I really like this yellow ochre in the palm trees, so I think I'm just gonna add some of this pure color in there. Make it look even a little more like summery. Yeah, loving that color in the combo in there. There you go, there's your painting.